Hey, Rising Stars. Happy Monday. I hope y'all had a good weekend. It was fun to see some of you on Saturday morning on our little Zoom chat. I love doing those, and I hope to do one again soon, um, at least one more this month, because I have it in as part of our challenge that uh, you have to get on there. So I'd like to give people another opportunity. Um, it'll probably be on the afternoon of the 25th or maybe the 24th. Um, just because the, my, looking at my calendar, it's pretty full up. But anyway, um, that was great. It was super fun to chat with you guys. So thank you for getting on. And if you didn't, we missed you, but that's okay. We understand. And hopefully we will see you next time. So there's a couple things I want to chat about today on, uh, uh, the little video. And one of them is... Uh, the recommendation from Laura to talk about today and the other is uh, something we were chatting about um, on our page today as well. So uh, what we're talking about is not letting the demands of others get to you. And this was actually a question that uh, Nicole brought up today on that director picture that I shared and uh, Nicole said, do you ever feel like it, having too much, too many people on your team is a worry because you, you know, already time is short and you don't want to have too many people on your team? So um, she brings up a very good point, right? Because it, we do have as leaders, we have this responsibility to help our team. We have this responsibility to continue to run our own business and to reach our own goals, and so. At what point do we, you know, we feel like it's maybe too many people that we can't handle or, you know, how do we deal with the demands that our team is maybe asking from us? Well, this business is set up, I feel, in a couple ways. Number one, we're training our front line to train their front line to train their front line to train their front line. So, you know, you're not really supposed to be having the demands from everybody like that. Now, I know it happens and it happens for a variety of reasons. One, I think being a lot of times sponsors are just hobbyists who happen to get somebody who wants to join their team. And that I'm more than happy to help. I'm more than happy to help anybody who's willing to put time and energy into their business. If they have questions, if they're working it, you know, as their director and as their superstar director and sponsor if that's the case, I'm more than happy to help them. On the flip side, if they aren't putting time and energy into their business and, um, you know, they're asking a bunch of questions that they could find somewhere else on the workstation or something like that, it's okay to just redirect them back to the workstation um, and remind them that those types of answers can be found on the workstation. Um, on the sec on the, the second fold is that everything that we do in this business, whether we're a team of two or a team of two hundred, is a, is supposed to be replicatable. So the the recommendation is that don't start doing anything with your team of six that you can't do with your team of 60. So for example, if everybody on your team sells over $500, you give them all a uh, free Sensi bar, that's gonna be, you know, manageable when there are six of them. But when there are 60 of them, that's gonna be a lot harder, right? So the idea is, you know, don't start anything now that you're not gonna be able to continue on. That's part of the reason why I do the drawing because even if I'm putting a thousand names in a hat, which, oh, praise the Lord, that would be amazing if that ever happened. <laughs> um, there's, it's still only costing me, you know, the $25 or whatever. So little things like that, um, kind of help to keep the demands down, keeping systems simple, right? One of our core values is simplicity. Um, and then again, authenticity and generosity, and that all kind of fits into that where as you build your team, if you keep it simple and keep it replicatable and keep it, you know, hey, frontline teaches frontline, teaches frontline, teaches frontline, and that expectation is set from the beginning, 
it all it all flows a lot more smoothly and creates less demand for you. Obviously, there's going to be times where maybe someone, maybe your front line sponsors someone and they're not really interested in building a team. They're not really interested in helping them, you know, and that's going to push, push back up onto you. And that's okay. I think that it all evens out. Now, how, how, if this is happening, how do you deal with it? I think that a, one thing that a lot of leaders do is set boundaries and set expectations and set them early and communicate them clearly. So business hours, you know, it's okay to have a business set business hours where you're returning emails, returning calls, returning texts, Facebook messages. And as long as that's communicated clearly, it will work well for your team. Um, uh, I like, I mean, I haven't really set business hours. I remember at one time I tried to do that. Um, I know Kay has done that before. Um, I pretty much take Sundays off, like pretty much, you know, it's not like a hard and fast thing, but I'm definitely not usually on my computer, um, checking my workstation or anything like that on Sunday. I might, you know, I might be returning Facebook messages and stuff to an extent, but I think if you communicate that, um, to everyone, people are pretty understanding about that. People understand that you have a family too. You have, um, some of you other jobs, you have, um, other social obligations and things like that. And so I, as a, as a whole, I think if you just communicate that, you know, this is when I'm going to be returning my emails and texts and Facebook messages from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock every single night when my kids go to bed. If you ask me a question during the day, just expect that you'll hear back from me at that point and you can check it again in the next day. I think that that's totally fair and a way to kind of keep those demands down. I know there are um, superstar directors who don't like, they won't, they don't want their team texting them or calling them or something like that. If you wanted to set that boundary, you totally could. I don't, obviously. I enjoy that and I encourage that. And I don't feel like it's a demand on my time. I it, I really enjoy it, actually. So um, that is something that when you, when you get to that point or you get to that level where it's beginning to feel like it's demanding, maybe you take a look at what's going to work best for you and your business. And it's going to be different from every, for everybody because everybody's personality and style of engagement and, um, season of life even and comfort level and all of that is so different. So, um, just know that, um, you can adapt it as you go and that there's support systems in place. So if it is feeling too demanding as a star consultant, super star consultant, obviously there's always your director to help you, right? That's what, that's what the directorship is set up for. If it's too demanding for you as a director, there's your super star director to help you. That's what that super star director, that's part of our job requirements, not a requirement because they're not like, I'm not going to get fired or something. But that's part of the expectation is that I will help foster my directors and my leaders and support them. And I, you know, I want to do that. So, and then as superstar director, there's, we have business analysts at Sensi. Sensi gives us a support system who we can email and talk to and call when we need help with something. Um, at any level of consultant, there's the workstation, there's Facebook pages and groups, although sometimes those can be more harmful than helpful with everybody's like, like, it's like the telephone game, right? Like since he sends out a message and just somehow like gets miscommunicated a lot, but sometimes they're really helpful. Um, and then of course, consultant support. We know we can always call on consultant support with these sort of demands. So just don't let that stop you from growing your team. There's always support. There's always um, things that you can do so that you don't let the demands of others get to you. So 
then talk, I wanted to talk uh, briefly about, um, what I kind of shared about growing our teams and work focusing on doubling our teams. So this was something that a uh, superstar director named Carla Hunter from, she's from Canada. Um, she was on the director call today talking about, she promoted 10 directors this fall, 10 first generation directors this fall, which is just absolutely amazing. And so she was kind of sharing with us some ideas on how to do that. And her main idea is that she focuses on helping them to double their team. Because if you double your team, um, as we talked about, we just imagine what those numbers would do. So, I mean, she even said on the call, if you're a team of one and you double to a team of two, you double it. That's awesome. So we're in February, which is a great month to focus on recruiting. We had last month with the join in January, which was awesome. Great promotion. And then February with the enhanced starter kit. So I love recruiting in February and August, not only because you get the enhanced starter kit, but because you have the opportunity to sell in a month where things are on sale. Everything's 10% off, right? So it's a great time for people to get six packs and warmers. And then there's the discontinued list and all of that. So it's a great time for that. And then they've got March with the new catalog and all that new sense and the excitement of the spring and all that. So it's a great time to bring people in because they're going to get off to a good start. We want everyone to get off to a good start, right? We know that shooting star enhancement kit and sensational start and achieving all of those levels increases our likelihood of success. So um, I love recruiting in this month and I really think if we, um, we ourselves focus on recruiting and we ourselves focus on helping our team recruit, um, it's going to prove beneficial down, down the line, right? As we are, um, if we can bring more people into our team in February, it's, that's really going to help us, um, come May, right? And June and things like that. So, um, when maybe there's not as much of an attraction to join. So, um, that is what I want us to really kind of focus on this month when we're, um, talking about building our teams and um, just working towards becoming director and realizing that, you know, the people who are, we're recruiting may not be someone who we mentioned it to the first time. Now, we might be planting a lot of seeds in February for harvesting in May, and that's going to be great too. So um, really, if we can focus on doubling our team in the next four months, then, um, that's going to really help us in the fall because it's all, it all doesn't just happen overnight. It doesn't just happen when we're like, we want to hit it this month, right? We want to put in the groundwork now, which is part of the reason why I started this training in January when I did, um, to kind of help us have that full from January to August to prepare and grow so that we're ready to hit director in the fall. So uh, anyway, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. I know it's something that's probably easier to write down as a goal than just to make happen. But I think if we start talking with our teams now about growing their teams and sharing the opportunity to bring people into the business and, you know, maybe you do a recruiting challenge with your team or something like that. Um, it's, it's going to pay off. So where it's shifting, maybe a focus from just, you know, just selling for themselves, sharing with them how fun it is to bring someone into the business with them and do it alongside of them is going to, um, is going to help. So that is our Monday talk. Monday was, this is our, uh, technically, I believe it's our 28th day doing Rising Star. So that's pretty exciting. I hope, I'm really getting a lot out of this program and I, and, um, feeling like I'm really building 